Hello students, this video is going to be about dating the Gospels and like a previous video or two, this video will not include all the notes that you should take down. It will give you just an outline form of what those notes could look like. So the responsibility on you is to fill in the outline by listening to the audio tape here. So this video, as I said, is about dating the Gospels. No, not that kind of dating. I mean like, when were they written? Okay, that's our, our key question here. And just to give you the uh, the broad outline, uh, we, we can look at two different views. Now in the video, we're just going to talk about theory number one, which is the modern view. And when we look at the claims and the reasons behind the modern view, we'll then look at the counterclaims, the rebuttals. And the rebuttals against the modern view will in fact tell us what the traditional view is. But I just want to put these two uh, theories forward to you and, and what each theory is claiming in order to give you a sense of, all right, where's the starting point for this debate. But again, the only theory we're going to look at in depth is the modern view. Now, the modern view will make two specific claims. The first claim is that Mark is oldest. It's the gospel that was first written down. And the second claim that the modern view uh, makes is that all the gospels were written after 70 AD, that is, after the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. And we'll look at why the modern theory posits uh, that particular view. Now the traditional view of dating uh, when the Gospels were written is kind of the opposite of the modern view. So the first claim that uh, the traditional view will make is that Matthew was first. And in fact the reason that the Gospels appear in the Bible in the order of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is because that was the traditional understanding of their order of being written. Luke will make references to other people writing Gospels. And John is widely acknowledged to be the last of all. Everybody thinks John is last, whether you hold to the modern view or the traditional view. Everybody thinks he's last. But Matthew, in the traditional view, is the first one. Now, also in terms of timing, the second claim of the traditional view is that Matthew, Mark, and Luke will all take place before the destruction of the temple in 70 AD before the destruction of the temple. So why such a, a different view than the moderns? And we'll look at that evidence right now. Okay, now what I would like to do is look at, at the modern theory more in depth. So the first claim that the modern theory makes is that Mark's gospel is the oldest gospel. And there's uh, a specific reason for this. The reason is basically, it's the shortest. That's it. And, you know, historically, uh, there's the assumption that generally speaking, if it's shorter, it came before. And then once you have the basic form of it, well, then you get add on to it and make it, you know, more flowery and, you know, all that sort of thing. Okay. Now, there are two problems with this view. The first problem is that we know from history that in a number of cases, what is shortest or simplest is not, in fact, the earliest version. Now, for instance, uh, it, it was thought with a chant that was used in the monasteries that at first the monasteries developed a very simple chant and that from that very simple chant they then added to it and made it, you know, gave it more flourishes and made it all fancy pants and all that kind of thing. Well, in fact, what the study of history has shown is that in the, in the monasteries it was often the most beautiful and elaborate chant that came first and after, the, after a while the monks were like, eh, this is too complicated, let's simplify. And so, in fact, what was more complicated and longer came first, and what was shorter was the simpli simplification of that. Now, the second problem is that all the ancient sources that we have about the Gospels are unanimous in their agreement that Matthew is first. And these are very ancient documents going back to the second century. So the Gospels were written in the last half of the first century, between 70 and 100 AD. Well, then these witnesses are writing, you know, within 50 years of that. So, you know, it seems like they would know. The, the theory that kind of uh, surfaces uh, is that, you know, Matthew, uh, this is in the ancient world, Matthew uh, wrote this, you know, big elaborate gospel, and Mark, you know, takes it and is like, well, I'm writing for a Gentile audience, and they're not going to get all, this old, all these Old te Testament references, so we're going to throw out the Jewish stuff and just give them the simple version. Okay. So that's one explanation for why shorter would come later. Also, think of a book. You know, a person writes a book, they give it to an editor. Usually the editor isn't adding a lot of chapters. Oftentimes they're cutting stuff away and making it cleaner and rearranging things. So, a lot of times in the process of writing a book, the editor makes it shorter. And now on to the second claim that the modern view makes, which, 
which is that Mark is written after 70 AD. And the basic reason that, that uh, some scholars think this is because Mark puts in the mouth of Jesus this, this uh, prediction of the destruction of the temple where Jesus says, not a stone will be left on a stone. And this is a really accurate description of what happened. So, the, the, basically when the Romans came in, they slaughtered the Jews in the temple area, and then they destroyed the temple. And they didn't just burn it down, they didn't just tear it down. They removed every single stone from the Temple Mount area. Like, they wiped the temple off of the map. Gone. Nowhere to be found. Because they wanted to make a statement about which God they thought was the true God. Uh, or which God wasn't the true God. So, these Jews who were always getting in all this trouble and rebelling because of their God, the Romans were like, alright, we'll show them. Tear, not only will we tear this temple down, we're going we're gonna to ship it into the middle of the sea. Um, or wherever they put it. So, the, the reason, to sum, it, to sum it up, is Jesus makes a super accurate prediction and only someone who saw the temple destroyed could say that. So they're assuming that Mark saw the temple destroyed and he just puts the words back in Jesus' mouth. Now, there's an important presupposition here. There's an, kind of a, an assumption going in. And the presupposition is Jesus couldn't know the future. This argument that Mark is written after 70 AD, in a sense, has to assume that Jesus could not know the future. Because if he could, well, obviously he could give a prediction of the uh, destruction of the temple. And if he's God, see, that's the thing this, this really gets to, is Jesus God? Because if Jesus is God, he's going to know the future. He knows everything. So the rebuttal against this, uh, this claim that Mark was written after 70 AD has a couple different parts to it. So the first rebuttal is that, well, Jesus is God, so he could have known. Right. That's, the, that's the first one, kind of a basic statement of Christian faith. If you really believe Jesus is the Son of God, well, then this is possible. The second rebuttal, or the second arguments, argument against this theory is that, you know, there are other places where Jesus makes predictions or the Gospels say things that later come true or, or are later fulfilled. And the Gospel writers mention those. So, the second rebuttal is basically that when a prediction is fulfilled, the, right, the writers mention it. So if Jesus had predicted the, the, the temple's destruction and the authors had lived to see that destruction, they would have mentioned it in the Gospels. Hey, look, our Jesus guy, he, he predicted this was going to happen, and it did. Isn't that awesome? You should worship him. Okay, That would be their argument. But no, they, they don't mention that Jesus got this right. Why? Probably because they didn't see it happen. And the third part of the rebuttal is quite simply that the destruction of the temple was too big not to mention in the Gospels. You know, if it actually happened, like this, this was a seismic event in the history of Jewish religious life. It changed Judaism forever. And there is no way that Gospel writers living in the ancient world, some of them living in Jerusalem, all of them, I think, in Jerusalem for at least some part of the time, but some of them living their lives there, there is no way that that temple could be destroyed and up to half a million Jews killed in this war with Rome and you not mention it in relation to Jesus. Because there's things they could have said, but they just kind of pass over. This is like doing a history of the Jews in the 20th century and just kind of neglecting the Holocaust. You can't do that. If you're, if you're writing about 20th century Jews, you've got to mention the Holocaust. It, it's kind of big. So those are uh, the three arguments against this position. One, Jesus is God. He could have known. Um, two, gospel writers mentioned other predictions that are fulfilled. Why not this one? And three, it's too big to be quiet about. They, they almost surely would have mentioned something had they seen the temple destroyed in their lifetime.